Welcome Vedanta, this is uh, Osho TV and we would love to interview you, thank you for your time. And the first question is how did Osho come on your path? First I want also to thank you for giving me that opportunity. First of all I'm so grateful that Osho came to my life, I think it saved my life. Yeah. It came through channeling, I was actually uh, channeling since I was 18 years old. It happened in a spontaneous way. I didn't even know what was channeling. And I had, with 18 years old, an out-of-the-body experience. It was in an accident. I was involved in an accident. And um, after that went up, and I saw myself from above. I was separated from my body, my consciousness. And then when I was there, uh, there was a, a beautiful quality of acceptance, something I didn't know about when I was 18 years old, I was just a kid. And after that, it came more and more and more in my life that I started falling in spontaneous trance states and channeling. And in one of these channelings, I was asked from my friends to talk about myself. Mm. Uh, in this channeling, I was Spoke, I was speaking that uh, I will meet a master, uh, he will be from India, and actually in the channeling it was outspoken who is going to bring me into this path and the whole plot. So when I woke up, I was furious about my friends that did this in spite of me because I was actually uh, almost sleeping. I was not having any awareness, any memory of what it was said. But then it happened exactly as I was speaking it out in this trance state. When with 22 years old, I got in touch with Osho through this people in Greece. And in th that's when the, the real journey started. Um, with 18 years old, after this experience that I had, I became a medium. And I started having a career in Greece, in Germany. I became famous, I was called in conferences, New Age conferences and so on. And um, of course one part of me uh, liked it very much, my ego liked it very much, I had so much attention, I, had, uh, I was in the spotlight, great. But another part of me was insecure and didn't know what I was doing in a way. And uh, when I was in this trance state, uh, wisdom was coming out, uh, leadership quality, people were coming to see me. I was on the way to a guru trip, really. And, but another part of me um, didn't know what was going on and even feeling scared about it, you know, because people were starting to follow me and, and at some point I felt this is, this is too much. Uh, especially when I was called in a conference in Germany uh, with big names, big shots at the time in the new age uh, scene, I thought, I'm not doing this. And that was the point that I decided to drop everything and go to Pune and go to Osho. And there I was received in a very beautiful way. Although I had decided to drop channeling, it was at the time that the uh, Osho Mystery School was starting to be created. So they called me and they heard about me and they said to me, no, you don't stop doing this, you do it here in the light of Osho. So I had to give some test sessions to these big people that I didn't know, <laughs> very innocent Greek girl. And I was received in a very beautiful way, I was welcomed and I started channeling in the light of Osho and at the same time I started working on myself. And that was very, very beautiful for me, that was the best ever, the best time. And I realized about the intuitive gift, the channeling, many, many important things. I really got uh, into the guidance of Osho and I realized first of all that um, it's not about splitting off what is happening here in the body, in the daily life, to uh, get into some spiritual, in brackets, reality, far away from what we feel, what is here, what is inside of us, what is with the body, what, what happened to us in our story, how we, how we created our personality. We need to look at those things in order to be able to let go of them and come to the real. So um, I started working on myself 
and I realized I have to ground myself first in my body to come back in me. I learned so much about grounding. I had to look at my whole childhood uh, issues and it became a very beautiful adventure, very beautiful adventure. That was one part about the grounding and the other part was about spirituality. Uh, the realization that spirituality is not something that is cut off from the here and now, from the real, but it is spirituality is the everyday life, living the life with passion, living the life with totality, thanks to Osho. I learned that it's wonderful, wonderful what he did for me. To live with totality, live with intensity, give 100% to it, all the passion that is inside, and live with intention, without intention in the field, and not just um, wasting time and not looking at what's there and, and um, spacing out. Not space, spacing in rather. Uh -huh. That's what I got, and I feel so grateful, really, so grateful. And of course, the um, intuitive gift has to do with the heart, and it's about opening the heart and trusting the path of the heart. And the heart is not emotionalism. The heart is just presence. It's just being here. So opening the door of the heart to be sensitive to oneself, to, to be vulnerable, to come in touch. And from that place, use intuition. Very, very beautiful, very beautiful path. That path of the heart, the path of intuition. And it's not about connecting with some far away intelligence or somewhere on another planet, but connecting with the true source. The true source is in every one of us. And we can have direct access. This is our... Uh, Potential. It's about realizing its potential. Yeah. When you had this this uh, psychic experience, yeah, when you were 18, that went into your heart already, me, because that's where it talks, or that's where the connection is. Yes, that's exactly what I meant before saying that uh, in this terrible moment of being injured in yeah. in, in really mm -hmm. in, a, in a not good way, and I was floating above my body, but what was interesting for me, also coming back quickly after, that there was a quality of acceptance, that everything is okay, everything is fine, just the way it is, it is perfect. I didn't know that, I didn't know this quality before, I never felt it in my life. I felt a big space in my heart, deep silence, deep serenity. I, my body was in pain, I was, it was shocking, and something in me was... Everything is okay. Everything is fine. Life is going on. Everything is for the better. It was amazing. That was the, the big opening. You came to Osho. What you learned grounding? Yes. But you were working as a channel already. Uh, yes. 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 Then you got the grounding. And how did that influence your work? I mean, the channeling has been always there. And I realized that the channeling has been always there since I was really a child. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got to remember so much through the work that I did on myself that since I was four years old, five years old, ten years old, it was always there. Amazing experiences. I remembered. I, mean, I remember. I was, I was calling the souls, I was talking to the souls when I was a child and asking uh, guidance and wisdom to relieve the pain of other people around me. Mm -hmm. Like not just do some strange uh, tricks or something. Not for power, I was using it from when I was a small child. Yes, how, how the grounding changed the channeling. That, that was your question. Yes. So, it gave a, a real clarity and um, an immediate rooting in the here and now and not losing oneself into stories uh, I loved this, the last talk of Osho, the last discourse of Osho. It was about past lives, I don't know if you remember it. It was so impressive for me. It was, uh, the last discourse was about past lives, and Osho said suddenly, suddenly, he says, who knows about past lives, he says, more or less. Uh, the past lives that you remember might not even be yours. It might be the past lives of someone else. So in a way, the spiritual ego that is investing 
the self-importance in the, my own past lives is swept away. I liked it so much. So forget about the past lives, forget about the story. It's just about being. And that's for me so, so, so real, the realness of it. Huh? So that's what grounding brought to me, to bring this intention in my work in channeling, opening up to also opening up to the source, opening up to the real, not for uh, serving stories or leading somewhere where we can build more stories about the future, but being able through channeling to connect with the higher power, the true self inside of every one of us. And when I mean true self, I mean selfhood itself. Like, we all have our individuality, but there is more than that just our individuality. There is selfhood. It's the, that state or that dimension of the real self. So it's basically the connection to the source. That's the quiet and the peace you were talking about. That, that was the quiet and the peace, that the space of acceptance is the entrance. That's the door of the heart. Yeah. yeah. I was living 10 years in Pune. I was spending the most of my year in Pune then. And uh, I loved it. I really loved it. I loved it. It was 1996 where I was called in Australia and I got involved in an aeroplane crash. Yes. And I was very, 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 very blessed and fortunate to survive this. And not just to survive it, I had to face death again. Uh, my body was disintegrated, I was really wrecked. When you meet death so close, when you're so close to death, something crashes down, the personality doesn't have a reason to exist. You cannot perform, you cannot uh, be vain about yourself, you cannot uh, try to show something. You are there in such a helpless state, out of control. And I mean, it's, a, it's a, in a way, it's a very violent way that this happens, but in a way, also it is a gift, because you cannot pretend, you cannot perform, you cannot um, put a show on, you cannot uh, put a role on. You, you're just there in, in a helpless state, like a child again. Uh, there is the trips of the personality, the defense, uh, come close, don't come, uh, pushing away, or I need you, I don't need you, and uh, don't... Uh, all this cannot exist because it's so much helplessness there and lack of control, and it's a surrendering. It's a, it's a surrendering. I was very lucky to live without my personality for a while. <laughs> I remember the first time I stood up again in front of my sink to wash the plates. That was maybe after eight months, like for a few minutes. I was so ecstatic that I was washing my plates. You know, it was amazing. I got really this taste. I got this taste. Yeah. I can never forget. I think after that you met the... Um I cannot pronounce his name. Afasai. Faisal Mukadam. Yeah. Before my accident, a year before my accident, I was doing in uh, Pune the Osho therapist training with Suda. And there we worked on the theory of the holes from uh, Almas. Yeah. I knew already from before because I had fallen in the hole. Yeah. I had the experience with 27. It happened to me with 27. I was in the ashram in a black robe with a white belt being a therapist. And suddenly I fell in the hole with 27 and I didn't know what was happening to me. So I, I was running through the ashram to find some friend therapist to ask, what is what's going on with me? Help. It's it's experience of having no ground, like feeling the abyss, like uh, having almost the feeling that you have not a self or uh, everything is taken away and you don't know anymore who you are, which is actually is a good experience. In the first moment that one feels that, it feels like a negative emptiness, a negative void, before we can relax with the void as the mother of all. I, I, I felt the, the sense of the negative void inside. At the moment, it was so intensive, it was uh, yeah. almost like a panic, but I relaxed. And then, one year before the aeroplane crash, I had come in touch 
deeply with the teachings about the theory of the holes and so on. And um, I was even asked to uh, maybe organize something for Faisal Mukaddam in Greece. But the plan uh, was fallen away because I had the crash. And then straight after the crash, the year after, I was called to participate uh, into some retreat and get to know about this work. And that was very precious for me. Because uh, this work is about um, learning to recognize the essence. The essence is not something separate from us. We are the essence. We, it's, it's part of the life itself. Um, and then when I met uh, Faisal Mukaddam, I got to see this part, to, to focus on this part. And something also happened in my channeling, I must say, that was very precious. I realized that the source, the source and the, the higher self or the point of light, as we call it in, the, in this work, is inside. I felt a big healing if there was any subtle split inside me about that wisdom and me as a self, me as a real person. That split was starting to come mm. into an end. You know, and I'm working on that of course every day. It's it's an everyday adventure. Yes. Every moment. And and that's the beauty of it. Yeah. And that's where this came from? Yes, this is a a book I decided to write because I, I feel so full and so grateful about this uh, recognition of essence and living with this in the everyday life. So I decided why not to write. And um, I decided to write this because in fact there is nothing of that kind almost in the world of psychotherapy. We have all the world of psychotherapy, all the world of the essence and spirituality. And I thought, wait a minute, there is a gap in between. We do all this psychotherapeutic work in order to get the garbage, so to say, out of the way, so we can reconnect to our essence. Or you, or you go to do the essence work and, you know, people don't want to talk so much about the psychological stuff. But how is this possible? Because if I want to reconnect with my essence, I need to know what in the first place cut the connection to essence. And that is the psychological stuff. So I need to look at that. Yes. Right? And then if some therapists do psychological work and they don't know about the recognition of essence, although they might be experiencing essence, then they don't help their participant when they go to the essential experience to move with that because that's the most beautiful part of the same work. So we stay only the psychological, we limit the work so much. So I realized there is a gap between the psychological work and the essential uh, dimension, the, do the domain of essence. So I thought, this is something that needs to be covered. And due to the fact that I have some, you know, psychological knowledges and, you know, I, I collected so much knowledge over the years, I work more than 30 years with people. So I thought, let me do the, uh, the connection with the two. So I want to write this. And out of this came this book. And um, yeah, it's, it's quite a rich work. Mm -hmm. It's called uh, Soul and Essence in Psychotherapy. It's exactly about the, the word psychotherapy. Is, it's an ancient Greek word that means serving the soul. That, that's what it means, serving the soul. You go to uh, the so-called straight psychotherapy and there is no talk about the soul. The, the, the most of the therapists, they don't believe even in the soul. Mm -hmm. These things need to be outspoken so we can remember. Remember who we are. Yes. We need to remember all the psychological stuff that comes up. It's not a disturbance. It's frozen essence. It's frozen ah, honey. Beautiful. It is a deep need to connect to essence that is blocked by an issue. So the issue comes up because in reality, it's the essence underneath that says, hello, I'm here, just find a way to access me. Yeah. So it's nothing to discard or to throw away. It's the opposite. Put the attention there so you can see what this is about. Yes. What is the essence that wants to manifest and is blocked in a certain way. Mm. But I have to say something more here. The gift of Osho in this. What I experienced with Osho from being in Pune and living there 10 years, Osho works on the level of totality, on the level of 100% uh, 
passion. It's not about lukewarm. And Osho works so much on the energetic level. With the work of Osho, there is so much lovability opening up in a person, so much the, the ability to love and to hug and to dare, to dare to open up. And this is so important because if the energetic level of, the, of that energy is not opened up, how can we access essence? We can talk about the psychological and do some psychological work. We can have some experience of essence. But if our energetic reality is not opened up, is not uh, willing to move, we cannot find the bridge. So the energetic work is the bridge between the psychological and the essential. And this is the work of Osho. I must say that I have never seen anywhere else that level of work and depth in the energetic level, which is the middle, which is the bridge between psychological and essential, then with Osho. I must say that. I, I, I have never seen it. And Almas, I think he does the same. But you know, Almas is beautiful and yeah, yeah, yeah. describes so much of the essence, of yeah. course. Yeah. But the work I on the energetic level, yes, I never yeah. saw it okay. anywhere else. I must, I must really okay. say that with, yeah. with, with uttermost gratefulness and humbleness to Osho. Oh, yeah. He's the one. <laughs> He's the one that, that led that path of the energetic work. It's amazing. And you know, in order to do the energetic work, you need to roll up your sleeves and sure. get down to the pain sometimes. Yes. It's not always so pleasant. <laughs> and it's not always nice the things you see about oneself. So oof. Yes. you have to level with that. We have to level with that. Yeah. And you have two schools, I understood. Yeah, um, one is the uh, Osho Institute for Intuition where I do the power of light work, which is my own work. And uh, the other part of my work is the Diamond Logos Academy, which is the really the work with uh, Pesel Macadam, which is very beautiful, very, very, very deep and beautiful work. And, you know, it doesn't stop there, <laughs> because I'm also a mother, and my daughter is my real teacher at home. Yes. And I became, the last 12 years that I, I have her in my life, I became a more a conscious parent. And another part that I do that I'm very much dedicated to is education. So I write books on education and essence, psychology and, and uh, parenting. And I have some publication now in Greece. And even with a group of people in Greece, we created the school. We started with 150 kids and now we have 210. And it's a school, uh, it's a private school, self-managed, non-profitable. And we do deep essence work and uh, psychological work with the teachers, with the parents. And we have we created a, a beautiful network. And this is, a, I think, this is the most beautiful of all. I can imagine. Yeah. Can you show, tell a little bit of how you approach the parents? The children, is, I think, is clear. This no, the children don't need them. Yeah. We mess them up. Yeah. Um, um, some years ago, when my daughter was maybe in the second class of the elementary school, I got to talk with the principal of her school at that time. And, and it, it, we just clicked. And I talked about say, some psychological or essential principles. And she was like, wow, come and do this, this in our school. Mm -hmm. And I, I did it. Um, I, I volunteered. Uh, this is uh, an offering work. I don't want to be paid for that. And um, we did. I did three, four years now work with the teachers. I educated them in essence, in basic psychotherapeutic principles, uh, be able to look at structuring and so on of the character. And then hereafter, it was so satisfying that the parents said, "What about us? Don't we do?" So then we started the, again uh, a volunteer project on the. Uh, parents, uh, school of parents, and then very soon we were working together the teachers with the parents around uh, n the beautiful and um, creating a beautiful network on the children and creating a, a situation where the child is really contacted, really contacted. Mm -hmm. It's not like just about learning A, B, C, D, and the numbers. That's of course yes, why not? But it's about 
uh, contacting the soul of the kids and the child really showing up and, and the, the child becomes the teacher in fact and, the, and the, uh, the teacher in the class is ready to learn from that and, and it becomes a process inside the, the classroom. We need to, to extend our gifts for, to the service of humanity. There is no other way. There is no other way. If we have a gift, if we learn something from our mistakes, from, from whatever happened in our lives, we need to really give it further. You know, there is where I find the meaning. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm feeling very fortunate to be able to come here in uh, Den Haag, in Vajit. I'm offered that space. And um, I brought, since the last September, the work of the Power of Light here again. And because I was working earlier in uh, Europe and places, and now I started in Holland again. And um, we have here an ongoing training, the Power of Light training, which is actually a, a four-year training. So we started doing the first year, and uh, it's weekends, is a five-day uh, groups, modules. So there is a continuity, because this is very important, that there is a continuity for people when they open up. So they know they have a safe place, a safety. And, um, you know, I, in the first group we did, the first training, I, I counted nine nationalities. So I thought, how will become a family? Nine nationalities, I was thinking. And within five days, we became a beautiful family. Because I do feel that the healing of one is the healing of all. And um, so, the group is moving like one big embrace for everyone and um, we are moving in intimacy. This is very, very deep, very profound, very beautiful. And within a year people are really flowering and changing and uh, walking the path of the adventure to the inside to realize their potential, to deal with their psychological issues, but also to emerge in who they truly are and to use channeling, the gift of intuition, meditation, grounding, all these things to have a real access to their source. It's very beautiful. I like, I like to feel the um, evolution. I like to feel the continuity. I like to feel the stability, the, to provide the safety for people. And um, something that, that where they can um, really feel connected with themselves and others. And it's like a caring together, that adventure. I like that. Yeah. And all the dates are on your website and on the um, website the, of Vajit. Of Vajit, yeah? yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you know, I, I, I live the life of a sannyasin really. And that, that started very early from 2022. I was already with a suitcase on the road. And But at the same time, you know, um, I like stability, you know, I, I like structure. For me, in order to be able to let go, because that's the teaching of also surrendering, letting go. And in order to, to be able to do this, because I love that, I, I am I'm, I'm drunk with the wine of existence, so I like to let go. Um, in order to, to be able to do that, we need also structure. If we don't have structure, if we don't have ground, the experience of letting go and surrendering creates a sense of danger and unsafety. If we do have the feeling of structure and stability, that makes it much easier and even welcoming to finally let go because we do have a basis and that's very important so that's how i want to create also my life and i do to have a basis a stability that i owe to myself and my daughter for sure and then you know uh, being a citizen of the world and, and and sharing the gifts and meeting people i love that yeah. of course in the basis of all this is meditation Meditation is the basis, is, is the direct connection to oneself inside. And it's beautiful because you don't need any therapist, and you don't need any priest, and you don't need any teacher. It is available. It is for free, you don't even have to pay tax on it <laughs> in our days. And um, lucky, we are very lucky that we have this access to meditation. And it's, it's incredible that, you know, we have the orange book, we have the the book uh, Freedom First and Last Freedom Meditation. There are so many meditations 
Once we get out of this uh, traditional idea that meditation is only sitting silently, meditation is everything. It's about um, living a life with presence. Living a life with presence. And it's so beautiful that there is so many different meditations that can cover all kinds of people, you know, because we are so complex. Westerners, we have become so complex. So we need so many techniques to find the way back home. And um, this is very beautiful, I must say. You know. and, and the work is a meditation, in fact. The work is a meditation. It is a way of meditation. This is the basis. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for this interview. I thank you very much. Okay.